Hello, guys. Let's continue our conversation on light and discuss what is an emission spectrum. But in order to understand emission spectrum, we first have to look at so-called continuous spectra. So in a continuous spectrum, we are going to have no observable gaps and all wavelengths of a given range is going to be observed. You can create a continuous spectrum when you shine white light through a prism. How does it work? Well, white light is made of all of the colors of the rainbow because it contains all the wavelengths. So you are going to create a beautiful rainbow, just like it is shown there. So what is the difference between a continuous and the line spectrum? In a line spectrum, you are going to have huge gaps between lines and only a few wavelengths of a given range is observed, just like it is shown in this spectrum. You can see that the most part of the spectrum is actually completely black, so there are huge gaps between the lines that are visible in the spectrum. Now, an emission spectrum can be generated by an atom or a compound stimulated by either heat or electric current. In this spectrum right here, we can see the emission lines of hydrogen of the so-called Balmer series. Four of the Balmer series are in the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum between 400 and 700 nanometers. Now, how come that atoms and compounds can emit radiation of a specific wavelength? Well, well, this baffled scientists in the early 1900s. But Balmer came up with a simple formula relating the Balmer lines to integers in the emission spectrum of hydrogen in 1885. And then three years later, in 1888, Rydberg generalized it for any of the lines in the hydrogen emission spectrum. Based on his equation, which is shown right here, the one over wavelengths equals to RH, which is called the Rydberg constant, and that is multiplied by one over N1 squared minus one over N2 squared. N1 and N2 are integers, with N1 being smaller than N2 all the time. And to describe the Balmer series, we need to have N1 equals to two, and N2 be at least three or a larger whole number. How weird that is that this emission spectrum and the lines in it can be explained using integer numbers. Well, scientists didn't really understand what is going on until Niels Bohr came along, and we are going to talk about him in the next video. See you there.